all of you. When a loved one dies, many things go through your mind. One thing you don't think about is identity theft of a deceased loved one. However, this is a major issue. Recently, the government had a breach of its records disclosing over 22 million individuals' personal information, including Social Security numbers. Every year, the personal information of 2.5 million deceased individuals are used to file for tax refunds or obtain credit cards. Here to discuss the risks of an identity theft of a deceased loved one and what to do about it is my law partner, Mike Solomon. Welcome back. Hi, Lori. I mean, usually we talk about the living having identity theft. So how does it happen when a person passes away that this could, this could come about? Well, sometimes the criminals just go on the black market and get all this information. But other times they might get some inside information from the funeral home or, or the hospital, all this information. But worse yet, the government just gives it out. Oh, no. Yeah, there's, the Social Security has something called the Social Security Death Index and the Social Security Death Master File. And it's gathered by Social Security, has all your information, including your Social Security number, and government agencies, both federal and state, have access to this, and certain other entities can also get access to all yeah. that. So what happens when somebody gets the Social Security number of a deceased loved one? Well, you know, they can apply for credit cards or, or, or tax refunds. So let me give you an example. Someone passes away, and someone gets that information, they get a credit card in the name of the deceased. So the surviving spouse, even though she might not be liable for this, all of a sudden she starts getting all sorts of mm -hmm. phone calls, or worse yet, they file for a refund for the deceased person, and the surviving spouse loses her refund. It causes all sorts of aggravation. How do we stop it? Well, ARP says you can do three things. Number one, when, when someone passes away, file a copy of the death certificate with the three reporting agencies, credit reporting agencies. Also put out what's called a, uh, a deceased alert on the credit, you know, for the credit agencies. Uh, number two, cancel all their cards and their bank accounts. And finally, uh, call Social Security. Now, the funeral homes usually do that, but do it anyway to just, you know, to make sure you've done it properly. All right. The death of a loved one in itself brings many issues that need to be addressed. Identity theft is not one you want to deal with. Take these basic steps to reduce the possibility of identity theft in a deceased loved one. Call Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization or log on to www.ssnplaw.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, How's Your Health? We'll prescribe help for what's ailing you. Then, from puppies to providers, we'll look into a pet project where volunteers raise dog, dogs for guiding eyes for the blind. But until next week, please remember to make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates. Golden Opportunities is paid for by Elder Productions.